I was recently told it was not the right time to be Syrian. When reflecting on that comment, I wondered why. What is it about Syria or being Syrian that some people see so negatively? I, I did wonder, though, if that comment held any truth. And I decided that no, no, it doesn't. The question for me is, if it's not the right time to be Syrian now, when is it? I'm not here to talk about the war. My intention is not to glamorize a country that is crying with blood. A lot of our friends, family, and relatives are still there. But I'm here representing myself. I'm also representing progress, contribution, and achievement. But I'm only one of many. The Syrian doctors that are treating your children, or the Syrian architects that are building your houses, or the Syrian carpenters that are making you beautiful furniture. Now, that to me is the other side of Syria. My hope today is for the world to see that Syria is more than a war, and that we, Syrians, are more than that. Thirteen years ago, I, I came to the UK alone. I didn't know anyone. I, I was scared, petrified, in fact. I didn't speak the language. I knew how to say a few words in English. Hello, how are you? But I also knew how to say I love you, of course. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping for adventure and, and a new beginning. And that excited me. Have, have you ever felt that way? When you, were, when you had something so exciting in front of you? I was very proud of my first job in, in the UK. It was an fish and chip restaurant in Brighton 13 years ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you were in Brighton 13 years ago, I may have served you some mushy peas with your cordon chips. <laughs> and then after a few jobs in, in hospitality, where on a good month I, I earned something like 600 pounds, I got a job as a receptionist. And after two promotions in less than one year, I was appointed to run the operations of an organization, and I was responsible for teams, managers, and clients that were placed in the most iconic buildings in London. Then I was approached to set up a division within a company, and then after that, I, I joined the global headquarters of an English bank, where my team and I had the influence to set up standards globally, and they also attracted a lot of international attention. Now, from a, a young woman who was told, you migrant, you can't be a leader. I now support people and organizations to become extraordinary leaders. I'm forever grateful for the amazing opportunities this country has provided me. But it took work. It took a lot of hard work, mentally, physically, and emotionally. You know, when I, when I get to meet people and they find out that I'm from Syria, I also meet empathy, sympathy, warmth, love. But also some surprise and confusion. Because for some, this is not how tragedy looks like. This is what I believe. I believe that Syria contributes, inspires. Now, did you know that thanks to Syria today, we have Apple and the iPhones. I've had a lot of support, and, and it's my time to give back. And I do that through the work with the Syrian community. Now, one thing that I'm very su pleasantly surprised with is that most of the people that I support are men. And this is teaching me something. What it's teaching me is that stereotypes are slowly shifting. I don't mind if you're a man or a woman, and the people that I support seem to feel the same. In my opinion, overcoming stereotypes is all about 
treating each other like humans. It's about togetherness and equality, regardless if you are Western, Eastern, Muslim, or Christian. When I think of Syria, I think of family, friends, music, food, heritage, and culture. Now that's Syria to me. That's my Syria. I would like to invite all Syrians to continue to be proud and be ambassadors of our great country, and also to continue to contribute to societies in a positive and empowering ways. Because maybe then the world may see the true other side of Syria. Thank you.